All right, does everybody have their materials? I really don't want you getting up and down in the middle. Okay. All righty. Okay. Is there somebody there? Okay, I need that coat over there, please, honey. I don't want to hide your face. All right, good morning, boys and girls. How are you? Good. Good. All right, today um, we have a math lesson that involve, is called multiplication as scaling. And to get thinking about that topic, I want you to take a look at this. What is this called? Globe. globe, right. And a globe is a model, much like the models we were talking about in science. In science, scientists use models to help them understand something that's very, very large or very, very small or maybe something that's not practical to examine up close. Well, this globe is a model too. Would you say that this model is the actual size of the thing that it represents? No. 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 Would you say it's scaled up or scaled down? Scaled down. Scaled down. Actually, it's scaled down a tremendous amount, right? Because our Earth is one big, gigantic planet. So this is a model that's scaled down to represent the planet that we live on. Well, did you know that when people make models, they use multiplication to either make something larger than it is in real life or smaller? And that's what we'll be talking about today, how multiplication can be used to scale something. And back when I used to teach third grade, kids wanted to make models for their science fair project, but they really got stuck. Whoa. They really got stuck when they had to use multiplication for every dimension of their model, it gets very tricky. So let's talk a little bit today about how multiplication with fractions, mixed numbers and whole numbers can be used for scaling or resizing something. So sometimes we have to take something really big like the Skyway Bridge and scale it down or resize it to a smaller size so that we can see it all at once or appreciate it. And this guy over here is scaled up. In the real world, he's very tiny, but when he's scaled up like that, you can really examine his parts really carefully. Okay? So multiplication is the tool that we use to scale something or resize something. Um, we multiply each dimension, the length, the width, the height, the diameter, whatever the dimension it has, by a factor to either shrink it smaller or grow it bigger. So if my donut is twice the size of your donut, so if this is your little donut, and this is my big delicious donut, my donut is twice the size as your donut. That means every dimension of the donut, the distance across, which is called the diameter, diameter and the height, if I was to lay it on its side and examine how tall it is, it's all twice the size of your little donut. So sorry. So today we're going to learn how you can resize or scale objects with multiplication. It's a really great tool. How you can use fractions that are greater than one to scale something up or less than one to shrink something or scale something down. And how we can use visual models, little drawings, to help us decide if one factor is actually scaling the other factor up or down. I'll show you what that means in a minute and also how we can use logic to estimate a product knowing um, based on one of the size of the factors. So you can look at a multiplication problem and look at the factors and decide if the answer, the product, is going to be bigger than a factor or smaller. And this is a really important estimation skill that you can use in math when you're working with the multiplication of fractions and mixed numbers. All right, couple quick vocabulary things that you really need to recall before we get started. So look really carefully here. Remember these terms. Each of the numbers that we multiply in a multiplication problem are called the factors. And the answer is called the product. You know that, but we just want to make sure we're really clear about the difference between a, fract a factor and a product. And also, the word of usually means that we're multiplying in some way. So if I say I have three groups of four, um, that means it's really three times four, or three, four times. One half of ten is five. So this word of is, is a reminder to you 
that multiplication is probably involved. If we eat two-thirds of half a pizza, that means I ate two-sixths or one-third of the pizza. Lenny? Um, one half times five isn't ten. One half of five isn't ten. That's right. One half of ten is five. Oh, I did the problem wrong. Oops, sorry about that. But one half, let's go back to that. One half of ten is five. So how could I rewrite that to make that? I have to take the ten and put it there and the five there. Good spotting. A week. All right. So there's a rule of the day: no multiplying. Mm -hmm. You have to instead use logic and estimation to think about the answers to multiplication problems. Okay. So no multiplying. So let's warm up our brains with a little exploration. Without multiplying, say that to yourself. I'm not going to multiply. That's right. Decide which of these expressions, in terms of its value, is the largest, the smallest, and in the middle. And more importantly, in your notebook, I want you to sketch something or show your thinking about how you and your partner or partners made that decision. So drawing, sketches, bars, anything that helps you think about that. Work with your partner to put them in order and draw some kind of model in your notebook. And here are your three expressions. 2 thirds times 7, 4 thirds times 7, and 3 thirds times 7. So go ahead and do that, please. Get your notebooks out. Talk to your partner. So maybe write the three problems down. Let's go ahead and write the three problems down. Okay. Sure. No, no, no. Let's not do that. Let's just look. Take a look at the factors. So you've got two thirds times seven, four thirds times seven, and three thirds times seven. All I want to know. I don't want to know what the answer is. All I want to know is which is going to have the biggest answer, which is going to have the middle answer, and which is going to have the smallest answer. Okay. Okay. So maybe write down the problems and go ahead and talk to your buddies about which ones, which one might have the biggest answer. Let's start there. Tyreek, what do you think? Why? Okay, so why would that make the biggest answer? Okay. okay, so you're looking at the numerators? Okay, so if you had to put them in order, which one would be the biggest? So maybe write that, write that thinking, and then go ahead and write what made you make that decision. Just like you just said it, okay? And if you can think of a way to draw it, go ahead and do that. Yep. Okay. Label it up. Label it up. And then, folks, don't forget to write which one you think is the biggest, which one you think is in the middle, and which one you think is the smallest. Okay. All right. Talk to your partner, guys. Add some color. Add some color showing it. Okay, but why? Why did you put it in that way? What made you decide? Because you didn't multiply, right, Abby? So you had to have some thinking that led you to sort of that. All right, about 30 more seconds. Remember, you don't just want the answer. You want to show how, you're think how you were thinking. Okay, what made you make that decision? <laughs> Very good. I love it. Okay. So, we asked you to go ahead and just sort these three expressions without actually getting the real product and putting them in order. Which product do you think would be the largest? Which do you think would be the smallest? And which would be in the middle? And why? Why did you make that decision? I heard some really great thinking back there. Is there anybody who'd like to share their answer and their thinking? All right, Michaela, come on up. OK, 
Okay, stand up by the screen. Okay, see if you agree with Michaela's thinking. Anybody have questions for Michaela about her thinking? Ethan? Um, there is another way that you could have, you know, just done it faster. You, they're all thirds times all sevens. So you could just look and figure out that two is small and three is small is the middle one and four is the third. Okay. All right. Anybody else want to share their thinking? Great job, Michaela. Thank you guys. Does anybody disagree with Michaela's response? Which, which fraction she thought was the largest, the smallest? Let's think of it, let me just show you one way that I think about it. I love bar diagrams. It really helps me kind of work with scaling. So let's think about this. Michaela pointed out that 3 thirds equals 1. And we know that 1 times any number is the number. So this would be 7. So if I was going to make a bar that's 7 units high, I would draw it like that. So let's just call that 7, all right? Now, let's talk about this one. This says 2 thirds of 7. Remember, multiplication and of kind of work together, right? So 2 thirds of 7. So if I took 7 and made it into 3 equal sections, this would be the bar that represents this expression. This is 2 thirds of 7. So this is actually shorter than this one. So this is kind of scaled down, I would call it. So 2 thirds has the effect of scaling 7 down to be a little shorter. And then this one is 4 thirds of 7. So it would be about a third taller than 7. So this would be 4 thirds of 7. So this would actually be scaled up. So I'm kind of agreeing with Michaela's sorting. This one would kind of be actual size, right? Seven. Two thirds, because it's a fraction that's less than one, has the effect of shrinking seven down. And four thirds, because it's a fraction greater than one, kind of grows seven. Thumbs up if you're kind of seeing that. I get it. I see, I see. Okay, all right. Okay, let's take it up a notch. So. Try this one. Do the same thing you just did on the next clean page or in another space. And go ahead and decide which of these expressions would have the smallest product, which would have the middle size product, and which would be the largest product. Hmm. If using the bars helps you, that might be a good visual model to kind of sort through this. Talk to your partner if you're getting a little stuck. interrupt you for one minute. Do these three expressions have anything in common? Do you see a number that's repeated among the three expressions, Tyreek? Three. Three? Okay. Yeah, there's, got, there's a three here, a three here, and a three here. Absolutely. Gianna, do you see something else? I think there's something else. Okay. Hang on. Do you see something in common, though, first, before you go to that? Three and four. Right. Three and four as the fraction, right? What do we call this fraction? Three fourths. So here's a three fourths. Here's a three fourths. Gianna, is there a three fourths here? Yes, because if you switch the if you switch the three and the five, it just becomes three fourths and five fifths. And we can and switch them because so you, to, you can switch it because it's more. 
Why? It's multiplication. The commutative property of multiplication tells us that we can flip these around or reverse the order of our factors and still get it. So I could make this 3 times 5, so that would be 3 fourths times 5 fifths, right? So if all three expressions has 3 fourths, take a peek at the other expression to see how that affects the 3 fourths. So go ahead now and talk to your partner and see. Remember, you don't have to multiply. All you have to figure out is which expression is the largest, which is the smallest, and what would be in the middle. Make sure your partner's on board with that. This one's a little harder, right? I know it, but I don't know how to explain it. Without using multiplication. Oh, without using multiplication. Okay, I'm going to give you about maybe 10 more seconds. Just see if you can sort them small, medium, and large. And then we can add a little detail to our drawings in a bit. To be honest, this set of expressions is similar to the other set, except that instead of a whole number, it has a fraction 3 fourths, right, as the commonality between the three. OK. All right. Who would like to share their thinking? Ethan, come on up. See if you agree with Ethan. Go to the screen, sweetie. Oh, very nice, so Ethan. So I looked at 6 sevens, and once you flipped it, they're all times 2 fourths. So a 6 sevens group is obviously less than 1, so this is my... Scale down, OK. And 8 sevens is just slightly bigger than 1. So we have... This one okay, so you're saying, so of these expressions, which one is the smallest and the middle one? So, the whoops. smallest would be this one, the less than one. Okay, times three fourths. And the largest is the is the lo is this one right here because it's more than one. Okay. And of course, five fives is one. So that would be like actual size, right? Okay. Anybody else want to share their art? Somebody who hasn't shared before. Okay, Nisa, come on up. Thank you, Ethan. If you have questions for the sh people who are sharing or you disagree, let them know. OK, go up to the, oh, go up to the screen, sweetie. So I found that um, thing kind of like similar results to Ethan, um, that um, the six, so six sevens times three fourths is the least, and um, five-fourths times three-fifths, or you could also say five-fifths times three-fifths. Right. Or fourths. Oh, there we go. Fourths is hmm. equivalent to one, so it would be in the middle. OK. And that um, eight-sevenths times three-fourths is the most, we get the most. Okay. Tell and us about your, your drawing, because that's a little different than Ethan did it. He made bars. You used a number line. So tell us about that. So kind of I split it into sevens. And so I kind of can, like put it on the bar to see which one, which bar would be the least, the okay. most. And so you kind of did bars, but you did them laterally, right? Yeah. Okay. Like, so seven sevens, this is seven seven because like the seven parts, mm -hmm. like one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven. Okay. One. Um, eight sevens would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And uh, of three fourths. Right. Yeah. Right. And um, eight six sevens could be one, two, three, four, five, six. Mm -hmm. And I found that uh, the eight sevens has the uh, longest bar, and six 
77 says the shortest bar and 77 is in between. Okay, but the important part to remember about this is this is as of 3 fourths. So yeah. this is 3 fourths right here. And this one's a little longer than 3 fourths, and this one's a little shorter than 3 yeah. fourths. Right. Very good. Love it. Okay, great. All right, what I want to show you now is another way to look at it. And I agree that we could rewrite this expression as 3 times 5 over 4 times 5, which you know is 3 fourths times 5 fifths, and anything times 1 is itself, so that would be 3 fourths. So this expression would be a bar about 3 fourths in height. And this one would be a little bit, kind of like nice explained, a little bit shorter than 3 fourths, because it would only, it would take one more seventh to be one whole, like this one. So this would be 6 sevenths. Um, times 3 fourths or of 3 fourths. So it's a little shorter. So this would be the smallest one. And then this is 8 sevenths, a seventh bigger than 3 fourths. So this would be 8 sevenths of 3 fourths. So this would be our largest. Okay. All right. Let's see a problem in the real world. Try this. Paige, Ellie, and Ivy are preparing for a race. On Tuesday, Paige ran exactly two miles. She is a great runner. Ellie ran one and a fifth times as far as Paige, and Ivy ran seven ninths time as far as Paige. Without finding the exact product, answer this question. Just turn and talk. You don't have to draw this one. Turn and talk. Did Ellie run more? or less than two miles? And explain your thinking to your partner. Did Ellie go more or less than two miles? Turn and talk. What do you think, Ellie? You think you went far? Okay, who would like to share some thinking? El uh, Pe Ellie herself said something very interesting. Do you want to share that? She said in real life, I would not run two miles. <laughs> I would not run two miles. But in this problem, if it was real life, do you think you would be running further than your friend Paige or not as far? For, you think you would not be running as well, far? In the, in According the to the problem. But in problem the problem says you ran one and one fifth times as far as Paige. So that does that mean you went further than Paige, or not? You think further, okay? Tyreek, what do you think about that? Did Ellie go further or not as far as Paige? Okay. So she'd go as far as Paige, the two miles, and then a little bit further. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else want to share their thinking, Lenny? Um, so I think she ran more because she, you know, she ran at least two miles because she ran. So two times one is two. Okay. So you're so. you're multiplying though, but but I also think you're thinking that one time as far as Paige would be two miles, right? And really, if you were going to make this into a fraction, this would be five fifths plus another fifth, or six fifths, right? And we just did some bars that show that if it's a fraction where the numerator is bigger than the denominator, the bar is actually taller. All right. Without finding the exact product, did Ivy run more or less than Paige? Turn and talk to your partners. Okay, Nysa, I just, I just eavesdropped on Nysa's conversation. Nysa, what did you just say? Sorry. Did Ivy run further than Paige? Ivy would not run further than Paige because seven nines is less than one. Oh, so she didn't even go the two miles. No, okay, she did. What are you thinking, Tanae? That um, Ivy mm -hmm. was, uh, ran less and Ellie ran more. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
So if we had to make bars, we'd have Ellie go, ha, being the tallest bar, Paige being the actual size. So Ellie is kind of scaled up. Paige is the actual size, and Ivy's a little bit shorter. Yep. OK. Go ahead up. Gianna wants to share an interesting visual model she made for this problem. Go ahead. So what I drew is this is one mile, and this is two miles, and then this is an extra three miles. So Ellie ran one and one fifth, which is about there, but then it, she was two times. So that's about two and two fifths. Okay. And Paige ran exactly two miles. Okay. So she just ran two miles, nothing else happened. And then Ivy was about seven nines, and it said two times. So that would be about 14 nines, which wouldn't quite be the two, two miles. Yet. Okay, great. I love how you guys are coming up with so many creative visual models to kind of, you know, kind of map out your thinking. Okay, let's just go back. I have some activities for you where you can kind of explore this a little more deeply. Hang on a second. Mm -hmm. All right, let's do a couple quick, though. Think fast. Is the answer greater than 2 or less than 2? Greater will be thumbs up, less will be thumbs down. 5, 6 times 2. Why? It's shorter. Why? Why? Somebody different. Jocelyn. Because um, if it's, below, if it's, um, if it's number below 1, then it's going to be times below If the other factor is, is a, a fraction that's less than one, it's going to shrink the two. Okay, good, try this one, fast. Answer greater than two or less than two? Seven, six times two. Jack, explain why. Um, because seven is a bigger number than six. Okay. And six, six will be um, one. I love how you're using logic instead of actually multiplying to figure out if 7, 6 is scaling 2 up or down. Excellent. Excellent. All right, so these are some questions, and we're not going to answer them yet. We're going to do some explorations that will help you feel more clear about this. Will the product of a whole number and a fraction that's greater than 1 always be greater than the whole number? Hmm, always, important word, right? How about this? So think about that. Will 7 fifths times 4 always be greater than 4? Just keep these thinking in your head for a moment. How about this? Will the product of a whole number and a fraction less than 1 always be less than the whole number? For example, will num problems like 3 eighths times 4 always have answers or products that are less than 4? And finally, this one's trickier. What happens to the product when you multiply a fraction that's less than 1 by another fraction that's less than 1? Will the answer be larger than the factors, smaller than the factors, larger than one and smaller than the other? We're going to explore those in cahoots and in some, some visual models that we'll be making. So listen very carefully because this is your chance to practice and enrich. And you're going to get a chance to do every part. I'll be calling some children in a few minutes to get laptops, and we're going to do a Kahoot that explores some of those deep thinking questions that we just talked about. The rest of you, when you're not with me in small groups, should be working on this project. You're going to make a poster that's divided into four quadrants. And we're not going to copy the student's work, but I just want you to take a peek. He divided it into four quadrants. He's not done yet. But this, each of these bullet points tells you what should be in each quadrant. In the top, the student gave it a title, Multiplication with Scaling. And it's going to be a poster that you can use to remind you of some of the important thinking that we've done with this lesson. So you'll want to have multiply for what happens. So draw a little visual model. Remember, do not actually multiply. Mul what happens when we multiply a fraction that's less than 1 by a whole number? And some of you have really great diagrams in your booklets right now that you could just put on your poster. And explain it in words. In other words, if I was to hang your poster on the wall, kids could use it to get some tips about what happens when we do this scaling multiplication. Multiply a fraction greater than 1 by a whole number. Multiply two fractions that are each less than 1. And multiply a fraction that's greater than 1 by a fraction that's less than 1. Okay. When you're done, both of these things, 
you can go ahead and sign into Khan Academy Map Recommended Practice, and there's an assignment in there for you on uh, scaling multiplication. Any questions about what you should do now? Yes? If you're finished with the assignment on Khan Academy, then yep, you just do the recommended practice. Okay. So once you're finished with the recommended practice, because what if I already done? Well, then go into your regular recommended practice. Okay. All right, so the first group I'm going to need are um, Abby, Tyreek, um, Ellie, Neil, Tanae, and Dark. Okay. And so quietly get up and start working on what you need. The paper for the posters are on the table back there. Is it in? So get a laptop and come have a seat. Oh. All right. We need a laptop. Okay, quickly get where you need to be. And this group needs to quickly log in. And What? No, no, no. into the game. Yeah. <laughs> 